In this first hand, we have a limper. We make it 10 with ace four suited in the hijack. And there is an old man in the big blind who calls. The limper gets out of the way. And we have this amazing flop, top uh, and bottom on ace queen four with a flush draw. He checks. We bet fairly big here. This is a board that I would either check or bet big. In theory, at least, against an OMC, I will never bluff this one. But uh, in this case, we have a value hand, so we go big. He calls. The turn is pretty much a brick. He checks again, and now it's time to go for a big value. Um, this is an overbet spot here all day with uh, two pair. Of course, he could have ace queen or even ace seven, but more likely than not, I think he has ace king, ace jack, ace ten. So from those hands, we want maximum value. And we go for the overbet, and he probably thinks for about two minutes before he finally flicks in the call. And on the river, we get the dreaded paired board counterfeiting our two pair. And now at this point, when he checks, there's obviously no value to be had uh, turning it into a bluff. Well, I don't think so with a missed flush draw, though I might even get him off uh, Ace King or something like that but I think this is way too risky so I just check behind and we get shown the expected bad news that he has ace king and unfortunately we'd lose this one but I still think it was great that I found the big over bet on the turn so this next hand, I'm not very proud of the way I played it. There is a hijack raise, a whale in the cutoff calls. I have ace-10 suited in the big blind. I should probably just raise this one up, but I thought I just play it passively, keep the cutoff whale in there, so I just called. Now we have a flush draw. There is a raise from the hijack, and the whale min clicks it. I mean, he could do this with anything, pocket fives or like 10-8 or something like that. Um, just could just have anything really. So I decide to call, keep him in, maybe hit my hand, but this was a mistake in hindsight again. I should have just raised this one here and now the hijack does this for me. He goes to 110. The whale now folds and I'm left with a decision here and I kind of didn't really calculate the pot odds very well. I'm getting pretty much two to one here, uh, which if I knew that I didn't face a turn bet would be good because then I'm getting the equity that I need, but I can't be so certain about that. Um, but I was then leveling myself into thinking, okay, if he has queens or kings there, then my ace is also an out or it's good because it's three outs. Uh, so I decided to call, but actually I should just fold here out of position against this very strong bet. I don't think it's really plus EV. It's not a big minus EV here, but I still, sh still should just fold. Instead, I call. Now the board pairs with a jack. I check and he annoyingly makes it fairly small, only 75 now. At this point, I think, well, I, <laughs> folding now just feels silly after I called that big bet on the flop. So I call again, still thinking that my ace might still be in a, a good... Um, good if it comes in. Unfortunately, the river brings in the third jack, and obviously I'm done with a hand now for whatever amount he bets, and when he goes in, I have an easy fold. But as I said, I just really don't like how I played this hand, neither pre-flop nor on the flop. Then I guess turn pole was okay, and river fold was obviously okay. This was another interesting one. We open ace jack in the cutoff and another old man coffee type player calls in the big blind. Ace king three is a board I would go either big or check. Ace Jack normally qualifies for a big bet, but not against an OMC. He could easily have Ace King there. So I just decide to check behind. He now makes it 10 into 15. Nothing else for me to do than to call. 
and on the river when he now goes 15 into 35 it makes me believe that I have the best hand I now decide to raise this and he folds I don't know what he folded but I think he probably had an ace or a king that he wasn't too proud of although probably he wouldn't really um, double barrel with a king there so he probably had a weaker ace which makes me believe that my raise was actually not that great because if I can't get cold called by an ace here um, then I don't know uh, what I would get called by that I beat so he would only call with hands that beat me and um, so yeah there was probably actually a bad raise here against this type of player. Here we open King-10 offsuit and get called by three players, ace-jack-7, we have a gut shot when it checks to us. Normally against three players I would be quite cautious and check almost my range, but if I find a bluff ever then it would be a hand like this one. So I go for 15 here. The baby whale in the big blind calls. I say baby whale because he is a bit of a whale, but he's not like the very worst player. Now we get there on the turn, but it's bittersweet because the flush also gets there, but he is quite short stacked. When he checks I have a mandatory bet here um, usually when the flush completes on the turn and if I decide to bet whatever I bet there I decide to bet fairly small because I want to push um, just small equities and he calls again the river is a king now and because he only has 94 behind I think I can jam this one even though I don't have the flush but I have the nut flush blocker as well so I jam he snap calls me with a6 of clubs so uh, yeah I guess when I see this then my um, flop bet isn't the greatest although I would never really um, expect him to fold an ace there so I should just have checked and uh, hope to improve then and get for value this is a good reminder for the future but here everything's good we got max value on the river once we hit our hand in this one we have a short stack cutoff who makes it 10, a lag on the button makes it 35. This is a mandatory 4 bet here with ace king in the small blind. The cutoff now folds and the lag calls. 754 not great for our hand but um, doesn't matter because it doesn't hit either range here. It's unlikely that the lag would have bet 7s uh, or would have raised 7s, uh, 5s of fours over a short stack so basically um, we now play against a range that's like tens plus an ace king ace queen so i decide to go fourth pot here hoping to clear out some equity but not expecting him to fold any hand that is better than ours he now goes all in so we have a trivial fold now i don't think um, we, we can ever call this all in and um, this looks like he has a hand like jacks or queens that he just decides to go with now um, so well, yeah I'm happy with the fold nothing else we could have done so I moved to a new table in the first hand I got there this happened the hijack uh, raises it to eight he's got about two grand in front of him so I decide to call here knowing that it's unlikely that anyone behind me would squeeze light and indeed they all just call great and even better the flop is amazing we have a set on ace king three and the hijack now makes it 25 for a moment I was considering whether to slow play this but with such a uh, wet board three players behind me to act I just didn't want this to be a very inflated pot uh, and possibly then get a club on the turn so I just decided to fast play this one I go 80 the button thinks for a while but then he folds the other two players in the blind fold fold as well and now the hijack does something that I wouldn't have expected necessarily but he just goes all in and 
And obviously we have a trivial uh, call here. I mean, yeah, maybe he has aces or kings here. Then we would have to worry, but not for long because on the turn we make quads. So now we are very happy either way. And he shows ace king suited, which I think was a very, very bad play. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think he can really get away with ace king here, top two pair. Um, especially if he calls and then we have the three on the turn because now he basically only loses to one combo of pocket threes which I happen to have but um, yeah he would just win against um, yeah anything else and um, I don't think he could get away from this one however the moment he jams top two here he just isolates himself against pretty much only hands that beat him. Yes, maybe the one combo of ace three of diamonds that is still possible, that one against that one, he might get, a, from that hand, he might get a call, but I think um, like any other hand will that calls him will have him beat because I can't see even a hand like Queen Jack of Clubs to really call once he goes that big. So that was a big mistake of, on his side, but we scoop a really nice pot in this one. Last relevant hand of the day, we open ace king in the low jack and get three callers. We have to play this hand out of position. Ace 10 7. Normally, I check most of my range, but if I bet anything for value, then it would be ace king with a king of diamonds. So I do just that, and everyone calls again. So now, when the board pairs on the turn, it's time on the turn. It's time to go into a very passive mode. But thankfully, everyone checks behind, and now we have a double paired board. Obviously, we lose to a ten, we lose to a seven. We won't get them to fold, but maybe we can get another ace. To to call if no one has a 10 or a 7 so I go for 30 here note that you should never go big here with ace king because then you really isolate yourselves again against a 10 or a 7 and here the button calls with ace do suited thinking that it would be a chop because he didn't really read the board or his hand correctly but obviously we win because the king plays here and so we scoop a pot against another ace here which is exactly what I had intended so very happy about that overall I think the session went quite well I didn't play everything perfectly but I did manage to find some okay folds and I got good value on quite a few boards so happy overall